it is not often I feel like we get surprised by a, a game announcement. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this game was certainly one of those. Mm-hmm. Came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere and also just like the pre-marketing or like the teaser for it was definitely something that was like you weren't expecting th- this to be no. the, the end product. No. Uh, <laughs> it was it was sure was something. Uh, hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Seasonal Anime Showcup OVA. It's a, co- uh, it's a podcast, not a cod past, <laughs> where we talk about video <laughs> games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Allen and Ladium. Hello. <laughs> this is episode number 403, and we are going to be discussing MEO The Smiling Man, a Famicom de- Detective Club game. Hi, like fish. You say you There's like no fish? fishing in this game. There's no fishing in this game. What What are you talking about fish for? Because you said cod passed. Oh, I was very confused there. <laughs> wow. Anyway, sorry. Yes. Uh, they made a new Famicom Detective Club game. <laughs> I'm very shocked by that. Isn't that just crazy? <laughs> it's exciting. I liked the first two quite a lot. Yeah, I guess. When they, when they did the re-releases. I guess those those re-releases did well enough for them to be like, hey, I guess let's make another one of these. Brad, I'm for it. Yes, uh, this is the first game in the series uh, since 1997's uh, Satella View game, Yuki ni Kiete Kako, and then I guess you, if you want to cl- clarify this as the first mainline game mm-hmm. since 1989's The Girl Who Stands Behind. Wow. A long time. <laughs> A long time. Thirty-five I years. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's almost as old as I am. I mean, the first game came out in '88. That's when I was born. That is when you were born. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Um, I wonder if they'll ever like give us the Satella View game. I, that would also require them to acknowledge the Satella View at some point. Right, true. They don't like to do that. Yeah, and I think like that one's like kind of like its own. It's it's it's, it's more of a side thing because it start. It's basically you play as Ayumi, and that's it. Oh, okay. Um, not C two McDoot. C two McDoot is not in that game. No, he is Damn. missing in action. Ah! But yeah, dang it. Uh, we were big fans, like you said, of the the re releases of I guess remakes of the Famicom Detective mm-hmm. Club games. Uh, in 2021, uh, it came in at number seven on my game of the year list. It came in at number five on, on yours, and it also won best moment for the ending of the game, which was uh, is a wild thing. Wild. If you have never experienced the ending of that game, it is it is something to behold. Yeah, that is no joke. Uh, so yeah, we were once we heard this announcement, it was like, oh, that's rad! I am totally in to play another one of these games. Let's yep. go! I was a thousand percent in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, this came like, out immediately on Nintendo's website. Like, I'm going to yes. buy the physical version. Uh, this came out on August 29th of this year, 2024, on the Nintendo Switch. If you were wondering, and yeah, let's talk about the development of this game. Okay. Uh, Emmy of the Smiling Man is is designed by Yoshio Sakamoto, who is the who was the director and writer of the original games. So they got him back to do this one and write it, which nice. is great. Good. That's a good get. Uh, he had, he worked on every aspect of the game, including the plots, script, and cutscenes. Uh, during development of the Nintendo Switch remakes of the Famicom Detective Club duology, Sakamoto expressed a desire to continue the series through the creation of a new entry. Uh, he designed the game to center around an urban legend instead of a ghost story due to his belief that it was more vivid due to it being grounded in reality. He intended the player's perception of the case to change as they learn more about the urban legend's background. Sakamoto described the game as being the culmination of everything he and his most trusted colleagues learned from working on the Famicom Detective Club series. Uh, in a 2021 interview, Mages director Makoto Asada, Mages is the company that made the remakes, and they also helped work on this as well, uh, he expressed interest in developing a new Famicom Detective Club entry. It is the first Famicom Detective Club game released in the past 27 years, uh, and is developed by Nintendo, EPD, and Mages, the studio that, like I said, developed the 2021 remakes. Uh, it was first revealed via a teaser trailer shared through Nintendo's U.S., Europe, and Japanese Twitter accounts with the hashtag, Who is Emio? There was also an official website for the game that at the time showed a creepy man standing with a smiling paper bag mask and trench coat, occasionally changing his expression with kanji behind him that read, that reads Emio, which translates to laughing man or smiling man. Uh, in the Australian trailer, the content rating mentions suicide and murder as content depicted in the game. <laughs> 
Uh, on July 17th, 2024, it was revealed it was an entry in the Famicom Detective Club series, which, again, that's like a month before the game came out. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something Nintendo has been good at recently, especially, of being like... Announcing stuff closer to release? Yeah, like a few months out, like, here's a, here, we're making this game, it's coming out in a few months. I um, love that, honestly. I love that way more than I like the, like... Let's wait a decade for this game to come out. Yeah, I think if it ever comes out. I think it's them learning through, you know, the whole Metroid Prime Four thing, and also probably <laughs> as a byproduct as well, like Tears of the Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like you definitely see more instances of like, like you said, just hey, we're announcing this game. Oh, by the way, it's out in a couple months, and we'll just trip feed you some content here and there, and talk about it, and then it's it's out for you to play soon. So have at it. Love that. Which is Love very fun. that. Uh, blah 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 blah. They put out a demo of this game before the game came out, uh, which mm-hmm. gave you access to the prologue, chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, which they released uh, those on different days to kind of like you know set you up for the release of the game, which was nice. Uh, here's some re- reception to the uh, teaser trailer. Uh, the initial teaser trailer was a subject of commentary and speculation by critics and people on social media because a lot of people when they saw the first teaser trailer did not know obviously this is a Famicom Detective Club game or Mm -hmm. that it was like or what exactly it was really right Uh, speculation occurred that it was an internally developed Nintendo title due to it having a site on Nintendo.com other speculation argued that developer Bloober Team was involved due to a recent announcement of a game codenamed Project M for Nintendo platforms uh, that was definitely the big thing a lot of people were thinking. It was like, oh, this is just a new Bloober Team game. Uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, hey, Famicom Detective Club. Yay. And then some people were mad about that. Well, it's because they're dumb. Yeah. They're like, I wanted a real horror game. It's like, bro, have you played <laughs> <Bruh>. this? <laughs> have you played this game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it currently has a 76 out of 100 on the Metacritic and a 72% on the Open Critic. So yeah, uh, again, this is a, I would say another rarity in and of itself is that this is a Nintendo developed M-rated game, mm-hmm. and those are very few and far between. Very few and far between. Those just don't really exist, so like, it is cool that Nintendo, again, is kind of like, through, Nintendo through this almost 40 year old adventure <laughs> game series is just like broadening their scopes of being like let's just make weird M rated games now I guess I don't know but it's also like it's not like shock value M rated games like it it made sense the way that it was set up um, which yeah, I, we'll 100%. talk about spo- <clears throat> we'll talk about spoilers later but um like it didn't feel like it was M rated just to be M rated like it it had a very solid reason for that. Yeah, the the content in this game is dark and disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, if you've played the other two Famicom Detective Club games, like, is no surprise because those right. games also delve into that kind of nature and everything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, going into this, I was like, okay, yeah, sure, that makes a ton of sense that this would be an M-rated game. There's gonna be some weird f-ed up shit in this game, probably. I mean, I saw the end of that of the girl who stands behind. So, like, I, yep. I I saw that. I know what happens yep. in that. So. Yep. <laughs> We see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, the gameplay of this game very similar to the other games. Um, mm-hmm. They've done like they've basically like upgraded the UI a little bit, so it looks a little bit better. Um, it's ve- it's much easier, I think, than those other two games. I think obviously because they are not rooted in the idea of those being late '80s Japanese adventure games, where the difficulty is going to be cranked up, you know, regardless. Um, this game's a little bit more straightforward and kind of like eases you into solutions more so than those other two games did and is more you're not kind of like roaming around to different areas to try and find things it's kind of like you're going to an area you're going to figure out talk to people figure out what you got to do and then you move on to the next one which probably for some people that's going to seem like a downgrade because it's not nearly as difficult and you're not i guess forming your own solutions as freely i guess compared to the other two games but i think if you want to make this a broader game to more people and everything especially you know with how people look at visual novels or visual novel motif games in particular you kind of have to ease up on the difficulty and i think that was probably the smart thing to do yeah i agree and we also have that 
addition of a cell phone. Yeah, they added a cell phone because that's. A, I love when series do that when like we're resurrecting an old series from times when this technology didn't exist and now it's in. We've made it in this time period. It's like, oh, I guess we got to add in this sort of thing because this takes place like what a year after the first game. Yes. And there's like, oh, we got to get cell phones now. And they're like, oh, cool cell phones, and it's just flip phones, which is very funny, <laughs> very generic, very basic flip phones. Yep. Um, but that's funny and really good. Um, it is funny, and we get to see the like old, like green mm-hmm. cell phone interface occasionally. And usually, it's because the protagonist C two McDoot has forgotten to charge his phone. It's true. Poor old C two McDoot. <laughs> <laughs> that man is not good at charging his cell phone. He sure isn't. <laughs> Boy howdy. I was um, just constantly like, I'm gonna check my phone. He's like, oh man, I have no battery or I have nobody to call. I'm I like, should cl- I should learn how to ch- charge my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it takes him like three days to learn how to charge his phone. <laughs> it's like, what is this new technology? Wow. Uh fully voice acted as well, you know, compared as the uh the other games with the remakes were. Um with the the characters that are you know returning from the previous games reprising their roles in this one as, as well, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you know this as well, but they uh, this game has a new composer for it. Uh, it is Takashi Abo, who you would know from uh, playing various science adventure games. He's the composer mm-hmm. of those games. Nice. So that's fun. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know if there's much else we can really talk about <laughs> outside of spoilers. Without this, getting spoilers? Yeah, I mean, this is a adventure game. It is a very story-heavy game, so, like, that's mm-hmm. kind of the bread and butter, and outside it's being like, well, it's a little easier. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of it, gameplay-wise. Um, so yeah, let's, let's dive into some spoilers, because that's, that's kind of what we need to do. Um, one thing I'll say before we get completely in Spoilerville is that um, the uh, the new like side characters and new characters you interact with, I really enjoyed them. Yes. Um, we'll talk about that more when we get into spoilers, but just generally, like they they were they were a lot of I don't want to say fun to interact with because you know murder, <laughs> um, but I I really enjoyed the character writing. Yeah, uh, and I guess also as well like. They really do a good job, I think, of like making this uh, dude rag in a situation where you have the protagonist and Ayumi both kind of doing their own separate things, and you get to see both of their POVs when they're doing their separate investigations for this particular case. And I thought that was a good job that they did there. Mm-hmm, I agree. So yeah, uh, let's delve into the story of the smiling man. I'm a smiling man. He's smiling. He's got his bag on. He's just smiling. He's like, hey. Hey, what How's up? How's it going? So, yeah, uh, like you said, if you're familiar with the Famicom Detective Club games, uh, this is a game where you're a detective and you're going out and solving a case. And this case in particular is about a young junior high school kid who has been found allegedly murdered uh, with a smiling face bag on his head. He has been strangled. Yes, and... Uh, this ties back to an urban legend from 18 years ago and also a serial killer case from 18 years ago where like three teenage girls were killed. Yes. And they all had these bags over their heads. Um, mm-hmm. So people are thinking like, okay, is this tied to those previous cases? Like what exactly is going on here? What is the, the origin of this urban legend and everything? Like what all what what all do we gotta do to figure this whole thing out? So, you know, you as the protagonist and Ayumi and gotta find out exactly what's uh what's happening with this case and all the twists and turns that take you through the games. Like, I guess technically thirteen chapters because there's a prologue and an epilogue. Mm-hmm. And yeah, a lot of us both being kind of like, okay, is this is this what's happening? Is is this the, the the solution? Am I trying to figure this out right? And a lot of it is like you kind of like trying to figure things out uh, until the game eventually at the very end is just like, okay, here's exactly what happened and here's kind of just like, let's lay it all out for you. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, I was proud of us because both of us were... Like, in the ballpark. In the ballpark, on the right track. Mm-hmm. 
So yay us. Yay us. We're 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 detectives. We are detectives for sure. Uh, <laughs> definitely most of this game it was it was a lot of like all right I am sus- a suspect of everyone I don't know yep. who to trust. Uh, nope. uh, uh. Ah. Uh, so yeah, you got to do all that. Let me see if I can find character names for this game because that would be nice to have. That would be nice. Because some of them, I would just be like, I'm dumb and I don't remember. I would describe what they do in the story as yes. opposed to their names because I'm bad with names. Who who understands names? Not me. Mm-mm. How'd you feel about... Uh, Detective Kamihara being a Shelby Snail. <laughs> how how does no that way. make you feel? Yes. <laughs> no way. Yeah, it's just Ken. It's Ken? Yeah. <laughs> I should have known that. You done goofed. I did. Oh, I love Ken. I saw so that name funny. in the credits and I was like, oh, I know that name. I didn't. I think I was just so floored during the credits that I didn't even pay attention. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, ah, what just happened? My brain. I'm scared. Very scary. Apparently, Junko's voice actress is Elliot from the Trail series, and also Love Live Nijigasaki High School Idol Clubs. Said Snow's mom. Nice. Yeah, you, you know, you need to know these sorts types of things, of course. Yeah, uh, you gotta. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are two new, new characters we meet. Uh, they both work for the police force. Uh, they are the detectives you will be running around meeting up with and, you know, dealing with for most of this case. Uh, Detective Junko is the, the more serious, straight-laced one, uh, while Daisuke Kamihara is the flamboyant show off trying to like be cool and everything but also <laughs> it just not really being all that cool he I, the thing we both kind of went uh, went with on this was that like we're like because we were very uh suspicious of him early on it's mm-hmm. like this guy is very adachi coded <laughs> he was very adachi coded and i didn't know what to expect with that um that was a thing obviously going throughout this game is being like uh about this guy mm-hmm. uh you meet a teacher named Subasa fukuyama who was a senpai of ayumi when she was in middle school uh he is the teacher at the school where the the mer- the the victim went to school so you run into him a lot uh some various students who went there uh then a bunch of other people <laughs> you meet along the way <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a lot of this is, you know, just you trying to figure out, okay, what's the deal with this urban legend? How, what's the deal with these cases from back then? Cause they are cold cases. They were never solved. Um, is everything tied together? Is, how is all this tied together? Like, is there multiple murderers in this scenario? Is it just one murderer and they're back again for some reason, 18 years later? Uh, how do you also, s- it ties into two missing people. How does it, yes, tie into th- certain people related to this case uh, because you eventually find out that like Junko's brother went missing 18 years ago Um, and then a man went missing from his apartment from the first case who was uh, who was uh, close to the victim of the 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 first case the original case 18 years ago Mm -hmm. he left he left his apartment with there was a lot of blood everywhere then went missing and no one's seen him since so two missing people one person connected to a prominent character uh, and just how does everything click together? Um, and yeah, a lot of this game is very slow about feeding you information. Um, which I don't think is technically a bad thing. I think for some people they might see that as a bad thing, but it basically is kind of just like, you know, through each chapter you're getting a little bit more information, a little bit more information. Like they're mm-hmm. not just like kind of like, hitting you with big reveals every now and then. It's just kind of like, all right, you get a little bit nugget of information here, and then we're going to move on to the next chapter, and you're going to get a little bit more information here. And then it's up to you to figure out exactly what's going on. You know, come up with your own conclusions and all that sort of stuff. Get some red herrings thrown in here and there. Mm-hmm. For sure, for Fine. sure. Um, But yeah. A, 
it definitely, as the game progresses, gets more dark and disturbing, especially mm-hmm. by the end of it. Because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, there's some uh, there's some reasons for the seasons in terms of this game and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, this whole thing was just... Uh, A mess of the mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, I I was kind of like all over the place trying to figure things out, which you were too. I appreciated your notes, especially the taxi driver being old. Look, I was expecting the taxi driver to be the twist of being like, because he's just an old taxi driver who comes and picks you up. And he's like, ah, you know, weird things happen sometimes. And I was like, and you don't really see his face. And I was like, oh, he's going to be, he's going to be them. Because you, you see at one point a masked man who's like, this, that's the paper bag I gave to Emiko when he's watching something mm-hmm. on TV. Which I think he's watching the report about the the, the urban legend. And mm-hmm. you can tell just he's like got glasses and a um, surgical mask on. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's could, old. You can tell he's older. Like you can tell he's either middle-aged or older. So you could, you know right then and there you can like eliminate a bunch of people off your list and be like, okay, it's clearly not this, 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 this. So you start to start looking for like, who's going to be older. Who's like, who would, uh, who would fit this bill? Who's got wrinkles around their eyes? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like a taxi driver. (laughs) (laughs) that You've run into once. It turns out it's not the taxi driver. It's not the taxi driver. Shockingly. He's yeah. He never shows up again. (laughs) You never know. Gotta no, watch out no, for those taxi true. drivers. And I mean, they do give you a lot of people that you're like, hmm, hmm. what do I think about you? Hmm. hmm. Um. Also, just as a side note, on a less horrible thing with this game, in terms of like, you know, not somebody getting murdered. Um. C two McDoot. Getting all all jealous and flustered about <laughs> Ayumi talking with her her senpai. He's like, bro. The, bro. the the conversation bro. the two of them have where they're trying to like one up each other in terms of like yeah. moments they've had with her is just so ridiculous and dumb. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so stupid. Like, yeah. Well, I have a picture of her in a school uniform. He's like, oh, can I see that? Like, no. <laughs> No, why would I show you that? It was that? evidence, that's, please. That's, that's mine. I definitely don't keep that on me. <laughs> I gotta go like, charge my phone. Bro, chill. <laughs> uh, and I also just thought that, uh, besides suspecting him at points, um, Fugiyama and his, like, obsession with the tiramisu was hysterical. That dude... Was so into that tiramisu. I wait for every payday to come get it. <laughs> Bro is so real. I don't even like tiramisu, but like sweets. And like knowing that you get that at the end of the day, like I get you, man. I get you. Also, he's just trying so hard to win Ayumi's affection. She's just like. Oh, he's trying so hard. She's just like no thoughts head empty about it. <laughs> just not even registering. <laughs> It's like, oh, man, he's acting weird anyways. He's like, hey, you, you think I could see you again? He's like, yeah, oh, for, for the, the invest- case. Oh, for the investigation, right? He's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'll definitely help you however I can for the investigation. Womp womp. Womp womp. Uh, I'm just glad he wasn't a creep. I mean, like I said, he still comes on strong, but I, I was worried he was going to be a creep. Yeah, 100%. And he's not a creep. I'm like, all right. You get a pass, sir. Did it. Go eat your tiramisu. Go eat your, go drink your milk tea. Your milk tea. She's like, I don't want any more milk tea. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah. I think the big things to talk about when it comes to this case is, like, a lot of things you, you know, you find out. But the big things are the missing people. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you learn uh, Minoru Suzuki... Uh, not to be confused with the wrestler, um, is Wait, there's a wrestler named Minoru Suzuki, but he's he doesn't have the T in his last name. Oh, okay. Um, he's the one that went missing 18 years ago, involved with the first case, hasn't been seen since. Uh, and then you have Makoto Kuze, who is Junko's brother. I don't know why I say it like that. I know why I said it like that. No, I, I know. Brother. Brother. Um, the brother. Like I said, who went missing 
18 years ago for mysterious reasons. Uh, Junko's never mentioned why or anything, um, but she gets real funky about it and everything, and she's been trying to find her brother since then. Um, certain people think, you know, both of these guys are just completely dead. You know, it's been so long, you know, where could they be? You know, other mm-hmm. people like Junko are like, well, I got to find my brother and everything, and then you get tasked to try and find Minoru and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that leads you closer to you know, finding out the truth and everything, you eventually learn that the urban legend of M.E.O. the Smiling Man goes back even further than the serial killings from 18 years ago to maybe, like, you know, further than that, and it goes to this, like, one village where uh, Utsugi is uh, investigating. So he's basically gone for most of the game Mm -hmm. uh, until he comes back at the end. Um so you learn that you eventually find some people who housed Minoru at some point, um, the Todorokis who run their car shop, and they're like, "Oh, this guy was, you know, he was kind of weird, but you know, you know, he we he worked for us and everything, and he was a great worker and all that sort of stuff. We tried to help him out as much as we could, and then one day he's just like, "I gotta go. See you later." And we gave him a car and these uh, metal shears because he was very good at that. So we wanted him to keep doing, you know, his trade and all that sort of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. But one thing he mentions that, like, you know, before he left is, like, I, you know, I, I want to take my sister out on a drive. So you, that's one, a key bit of information you learn. And also, you keep hearing the the name Emiko. So it's just mm-hmm. like, okay, is that his sister? Is he the smiling man and he's trying to find her? Like, what exactly is the deal? Is he the one that's actually killing those girls? Or what exactly is happening? Because, like, they paint him in such a good light. They kind of, you know obviously cast doubt on like what you would think of this guy uh so all that happens uh you meet uh a lady who owns a bar who had a run-in with the smiling man at one point in her youth and she laughed at him and he went away which is supposedly one of the things in the urban legend so she had an encounter with him didn't get killed and then you know that's how she turned her bar into the smiling bar essentially um Mm -hmm. but that gives you another thing of like okay well clearly it's not killing every young girl he comes across so what's going on there um there's the whole thing with junko where like the smiling man goes to her house and leaves her the note of just says to emiko and it has the hair clip she had been missing since 18 years ago so you're Mm -hmm. like okay is her brother involved in this somehow right like is he has he like is he doing these killings now like what exactly is happening and all that sort of stuff so many so many questions so very few answers at this point in time this game um there's a point where you have to you go and confront uh kamihara about junko and you're like hey this is all the stuff i have about it like you know she rides a motorcycle um there was a motorcycle scene of the crime uh you know, she said she had to get up early, get up early that on the day. day, and it's like, that seems really suspicious and everything. She has the tie of the kid who died Yep. <laughs> in her apartment. Like, what's up with that? That seems a little suspicious. Kamihara basically has, like, a breakdown in his car. Like, he gets p- first, but he's just, like, trying to rationalize it all away. And Yeah. It, it was a really cool scene in terms of, like, how he was reacting because he like obviously he's mad that you're suspecting his partner and everything, someone he trusts, but also like he kind of like while you're you know giving him this information, kind of like starts like thinking and it's like mm, maybe this isn't all just baloney, maybe mm-hmm. there is something to this. Uh, so you have all that go down. Um, a lot of you, a lot of this during in the end parts of the game is you kind of just like canvassing around specific areas, like trying to, because you have sketches of both the missing guys, how they would look nowadays, um, trying to find them. Um, the the Todorokis obviously were, or they uh, confirmed the the sketch of older Minoru was him. Mm-hmm. But then you find like these uh, construction workers, not construction workers, but they're like road workers essentially. Yeah. Um, and you show them the, the older picture of Makoto, they're like, oh yeah, that's Suzuki. And then you're like, huh? Huh? And then he gets, like, another person to come over and like, yep, that's Suzuki. Yeah, that's the exact same guy. And he's just like, that's, uh, that's very bizarre. Mm, that doesn't make a whole lot of right. sense. Um, and like, you, I think at one point you go, so go back and like, to the Todoroki's like, hey, is this, 
I mean, let me just double check here. And they're like, no, that's the other one is definitely him. I don't know why this yeah. uh, they'd be saying this for the other one. Mm-hmm. And they make mention of like, you know, he worked for us. He was very quiet, wore a mask all the time and like, you know, would walk home every night. But like the last night he worked for us, I gave him a ride and he like told me to stop in the middle of nowhere. And he just got off into the woods and just Start left hiking in the woods. And it's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> Weird guy. But all right. So you get like a whole, um, you get, you get like an ad, not an address, but a location of where that's at. And, you know, being the smart detective you are, you're like, I'm going to go there by myself and my phone's dying. I'm not going to call anyone. It's fine. (laughs) It's not fine. It's not fine. This is a bad idea. Don't do this. No. Always charge your cell phone whenever you go into the spooky woods. Yes. Uh, so you go through the woods, you definitely see indications that people have been through here through like you know walking tracks and everything and all that sort of stuff like a tie on a tree yeah there's little markers here and there and then you eventually come across this like abandoned village that just like all the houses are derelict and everything and just like oh, that's weird what's going on here and you're about to like go uh investigate and junko like stops you and she's like what are you doing here this is a police investigation you should leave and you're just like, I, okay, I guess, I guess I kind of have to go now. <laughs> so you go to leave, and then you hear gunshots, and you run back, and then there's Junko standing over a dead body <laughs> with her head with split open. Head split open, and she is covered in blood. Covered in blood. And you're just like, what the heck happened here? And she's like, oh, I, I killed Minoru Suzuki. Like, that's him right there. He's dead. I hit him in the head with a machete. He tried to attack me, and you're just like... That's, hmm, I mean, mm. I guess I could be, but also, like, there's no machete here. Why are you just, like, stood like that? That's real strange. And then, like, she just, like, pulls a gun on you and is like, why did go. you come back? Go, you should have left. What are you doing here? Now I got to kill you as well. And you're like, whoa, what's going ah, on here? Yikes. Uh, and basically <laughs> through this, like, yeah, it's a whole lot. And then she kind of explains, like, oh, yeah, you know my brother showed up (laughs) and I told him to get out of here and then the other guy started coming after me and he bonked him on the head with a machete and killed him and I told him to get out of here and that's kind of how this happened and then her brother shows back up with the machete he's like don't make my sister cry (laughs) Ah. and then you hear bang bang and then you get like a little like Oh, okay. Here's here's what's happened afterwards, and it's like, oh, I'm fine. Yay! <laughs> Let me tell Ayumi about what's happened and everything. Um, good old Daisuke shows up at the nick of time and shoots her brother. Doesn't kill him. Um, kind of just disables him so he doesn't mm-hmm. try and murder you. Um, right. But also, he's a bad shot, so I guess it technically works out in the end. It's so funny because like they bring up how bad of a shot he is throughout the entire game. And then it finally came into play. Yep. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. His bad shot worked. <laughs> he's still a bad shot, but he's at least a good enough shot that he didn't kill the guy. So I'll take that. Now he just has to help with the rehab. Yeah. So like her brother's in a rehab, obviously, because he'd been kidnapped for 18 years and kind of needs to reacclimate himself to actual society, society and everything. Also, he got shot. Um, yeah, there's that too. It, it seems like he's sitting, so he, he may like have some issue with his leggies or something yeah I don't know. probably something of that nature uh junko resigns herself from the police force because you know she obviously she tampered with the original crime scene that kid mm-hmm. committed suicide because like he had an argument with one of his best friends who had confessed to the teacher and then he was also struggling with grades and everything and trying to not show it to everyone and kind of just like hit a breaking point and committed suicide junko found that found him on the day where he died like the night of mm-hmm. and kind of and she had found at her home or like her her family home her family home a box that had the paper bag in it because she obviously had found she had been i guess okay so when her brother got kidnapped yes when her brother got kidnapped uh she was sitting on the side of the road because they got into a fight and she went out and she he left she left and he went out looking for her uh, a car pulls up and it's the smiling man who's going to try and kill her because she's not laughing and she's very sad. And her brother shows up and tries to fend him off and he gets attacked and choked out and then basically put into the trunk of the smiling man's car. But while that all happens, she tries to, you know, 
get this guy off her brother and then she rips off the mask and sees a very uh <sighs> disturbing face yes um but yeah that, that's how her brother gets kidnapped and she just didn't she didn't tell anyone i guess obviously because like that is a very traumatic experience and mm -hmm. all that but she does have the mask from when that happened so she uses that mask puts it on the the kid who died and basically tries to use that as a way to reopen those past cases and try and use that as a way to find her brother. Um, so obviously she steps down from the police force because you can't be doing that when you're a, a yeah. police person. You can't steal the suicide note and the, yes. the tie and also plant <laughs> evidence. Uh, you know, it's all all pretty pretty shady. Yeah. Um, also, that suicide note was really sad with the whole like bye bye at the end. Yeah. I was like, oh. Uh, so you like like she writes a letter to the detective agency to kind of like tell you exactly what's happening and everything and then at the end she signs it that you know all this is happening blah 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 blah. here's a photo i've enclosed of the three of us and i was like oh yeah okay so it's you know her her brother and her grandma probably of all that's yeah. what i thought of too. course and then like she signs like oh by the way you know regards junko kami hard like that wait that wasn't her name right does she like wait does she have like a, another name and then <laughs> you see a photo it's like oh i guess she buried daisuke she married <laughs> Whoa! him they got married. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. You know, that's he 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 was he was gunning for it. He was a real one. He was a real one, honestly. A terrible shot, but a real one. Yeah. Good for him. And so, he's not a dachi at all. No, it's just very good. Good for him. So you get that uh Utsugi shows back up. He's like, "Hey, what's up everyone? <laughs> I even you want to go for lunch? Not you, <laughs> C2 McDoot." <laughs> You're like, "Oh, boy." <laughs> Why? I helped. <laughs> and like Dice Case called you, you're like, they won't let me go to lunch. <laughs> Which probably is, is the thing of like, oh, you probably have to go do more work because this case is still like finalizing and all that sort of stuff. I would assume that's probably mm -hmm. the case. Probably. Um. So yeah, that's the end of the game, quote unquote. And then you get an and epilogue. So, yeah. So it ended and I was like, oh, but I still have questions. I'm yes. confused. And yes. then like it, it finished the credits and then like the menu changed. I was like, oh. And then you get a warning. Yeah, so they, um, like you said, you go through the credits, and then you get the title screen of Emil the Smiling Man, and then it switches to Minoru, Famicom mm -hmm. Detective Club. And you get a phone call from Utsugi. He's like, hey, we got to go over the stuff I learned and everything, and you know, this will kind of like tell you or fill you in on the details that you might not know. Also, oh, yes. uh, you might want to be prepared for this. <laughs> yeah. Are you sitting down? You should This is going to get rough. So, yeah, they basically <laughs> kind of give you a warning, like, you, uh, you better be ready for this. Yeah, like, that. Uh, that that that's kind of a clear trigger warning situation there. Yes, very much so. <laughs> so, yeah, the epilogue oh. is, like, you and the, detec in the detective uh, agency, like, you and Utsugi just sitting there in front of each other, and he's like, all right, here's what I found out in my investigation and everything. I found out the origins of the Smiling Man urban legend and everything. And, you know, it dates back to Minoru and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, this is going to explain what happened to lead up to all that. And, you know, this isn't to change your mind on people or anything, but it's just to shed light on exactly what happened. Here's some context. Yes, context is needed. So this all dates back to the, uh, the, the village that Utsugi was investigating. It is where... Um, and Noru grew up along with his his sister Emiko. Mm -hmm. Um, something they had ha a hella abusive dad. Yeah, something happened at some point where like the mom leaves, which I'm mm -hmm. guessing is probably due to abuse, most likely. Makes and they sense. are left with their dad, who just basically endlessly abuses them. Um, mm -hmm. and a lot of the villagers kind of just like, you know, we didn't really know what to do in this situation. Like, should we have tried to stop them? Do we? Like, how? Like, what exactly should we have done? Um, so they're having a very bad time. Uh, Minoru, at some point, to try and make his sister happy again, like, starts wearing this paper bag with a smiley face on it, which is, you know, as we see in the game, it is the, the same mask and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and he makes her one, too. He makes her one like as well. One lipstick. Yeah. And they try and use that as a way to kind of just, like, you know, find happiness in a terrible situation that they are in. Um, some point later, they are, I guess, the, one of the villagers presumes that they're going to try and run away. Um, the dad finds out and throws all their stuff into the river. Emiko tries to go out into the river and get her stuff. She drowns. 
Mm-hmm. And it basically wrecks everyone. Menor spe- specifically, it just destroys him. Um, where, like, he's there at the riverside and then just runs away. And, like, one of the villagers is like, I should have stopped him. I should have tried to do anything. But, you know, like, what do you do in that situation? Uh, you know, he goes off to, he goes to his home and he, at, after that, he murders his dad. Yep. And then shows up to his sister's funeral, leaves the, the bag, her, in the, her bag, her bag in the, in the, the coffin to leave it with her and then he goes off to a juvenile detention center afterwards because of he murdered somebody yeah and also like you know we gotta get this kid out of this situation pronto yeah that too um so you meet up or utsuki meets up with like the the person who was running the detect the 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 detention facility and he was like yeah even though he was a quiet kid he would kind of just like mutter to himself we tried to get him in the path of like you know working on cars and stuff because he seemed to express some sort of an interest in that um, and we thought like that would help re- rehabilitate him and everything and give him a skill set to use when he got out and everything. Um, so like, you know, we thought things were going well and everything. We had to obviously monitor his mental well-being because of things that happened, of course. Right. Um, Trauma. But then like he talks about like, you know, he was about to leave and everything. And he mentions the thing about like, oh, Minoru said he wanted to, you know, get a car and take his sister, take his sister on a ride. ride. And, and the guy's like. As far as I know, he only had one sister, and that sister is dead. So, like, that was kind of a red flag by that. By that. Um, so, yeah, he leaves the, the, the detention facility. He goes back to the village he he lived in for a little bit, you know, just doing odd jobs here and there. And things start to, like, the, the vibes in the village are a little rough, obviously. So he leaves there. This is where he eventually ends up with the Todorokis to work with them and everything. And, you know, everything... You see, a lot of here is, like, you kind of see, like, okay, you know, maybe there is a path for this guy to find something good in life. Like, find mm. a way through this trauma and everything. Like like you said, obviously, this this is a, you need a lot of therapy and everything. Yep. But, like, this is, like, the way they are setting this up is, like, you could see this guy turning the corner and, like, you know, finding something new in life and not just being have all this terrible trauma just you know weighing him down all the time and um, i mentioned to you like the todoroki family like they very very clearly love him to pieces yes like they 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 care about him they treat him like their son they think of him as their son mm-hmm. um and like they're the family that he he needed, needed. yeah um but as i also mentioned to you he also needed lots of therapy and with with that missing uh things fell apart yeah so around this time as well he meets up with a girl named ayaka hashizumi who is going to become the first victim of these murder cases um they have a pretty okay relationship you know they hang out all uh, after work and everything um just chit-chatting doing their own things and all that sort of stuff um but she's also coming from an abusive family family so Mm mm-hmm uh, she at one point goes to his apartment and like, it's just like, you know, Hey, I just wanted to come see you and everything. And he puts on the, the mask and everything to try and cheer her up. Like he did with his sister and everything. You know, like, okay, some, like, yeah, sure. Silly dances yeah. and stuff, which this is, we saw the drunk old man walking by at this point. And I was like, you, <laughs> you actually did see things. You did the, the things you were saying to me that I thought were nonsense. They happened. You're talking about real stuff. But yeah, like I shouldn't they, have doubted you, drunk man. They both put on the mask and everything, but he also sees like that her face is bruised, and she's like, "Oh, you know, I, I fell. It's nothing. Don't worry about it." And obviously, not a good thing because that's just gonna nope. reinvigorate his trauma and everything. And also, mm-hmm. he thinks she's Emiko, mm-hmm. which again is not something good. Um, nope. They talk about leaving together and everything, and then like they're about to do that, and. She walks into her house and walks in on him choking out her dad with the mask on. And she's obviously freaked out by that. And he's like, oh, come on, we got to go. Let's go, Emiko. She's like, I'm not Emiko. What are you talking about? And then something in him snaps in and there and he murders this girl and Mm -hmm. leaves her by the beach with the bag on her head. That's obviously the first victim. And And presumably sets the house on fire because the dad was found inside there. Yeah. 
Um, this obviously sets off a chain of re chain reaction of sorts where like he basically thinks like, you know, if I find young girls who are sad by themselves crying, like if they can look at me and laugh, they'll be fine. If they keep crying, they will just be hurt by something else and I need to get them out of this world. Mm -hmm. So he does that with two other girls um, who are the, the next two victims. And then, and then that, the mama is the one who laughs and mm -hmm. gets left alone. And then that leads to the incident with Junko and her brother. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he kidnaps uh, Makoto and basically thinking that, like, he sees himself in this kid. And then basically, because Makoto gets amnesia from the, from probably from the asphyxiation. Um, and then he's basically like, you're Minoru Suzuki. You're going to, you know, go work and make money and we're just gonna live in this dilapidated house i'm never mm -hmm. gonna show you my face or anything and thing. i'll talk about emiko and that's kind of it that's how these two lived for the, the the next 18 years yep um makoto of course has trouble because he keeps running into junko inadvertently like he runs into her once at like a station and she's like yo you're my brother what are you doing and he's like walks away because obviously he doesn't remember her Right. Um, and then he sees her again, like, canvassing, you know, for her, like, sending out flyers, and he tells that to Minoru, and that kind of sets off the, the thing where, like, Minoru starts coming back out. Um, so, obviously, he sees the um, the television special about Emio the Smiling Man, the urban legend about that, and then mm -hmm. at one point, he's like, you know, we're gonna go see Emiko, and they go out, and they find... Um, the the high school or the the girl Megumi who was friends with uh Aisuke who was the victim at the very beginning of the game and like mm -hmm. she's there because she's like trying to find a way to like bring him back and everything and she runs into Minoru who's just like there she wants to like heal his soul yeah and she's like oh I gotta say something to you know to make you go away or I, there's a spell I don't remember it ah and like she's like starts breaking down and he's like starts going for her but then uh Fukuyama is like starts yelling trying to find her somewhere and causes Minoru to, to run off. Um, One thing that I did like about this part is that, um, you know, she's freaking out trying to remember. He calls her Emiko and she's like, that's right. Emiko, those are the magic words to heal him. Mm -hmm. um, so like, apparently that part of the, the legend is, is somehow alive. Yeah. Um, because that's how she thought that she could fix the situation in the ice case so they could like go to the afterlife. Yeah, uh, I guess we should also mention because I definitely glossed over this part, but you definitely did. I definitely did, and I just remembered we got to talk about the the grotesque parts of this game. The um, scene. So after he murders, uh, the uh, first victim. Ayaka and her dad and everything, he goes back to his apartment and just like no He's one. Like I'm not, I'm not funny enough. I'm not, I can't yeah, make I, people I, smile. I can't make people smile. And he like draws the 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 thing, basically the smiling face that he has on the bag on his face. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not happy enough. I'm not smiling enough. And then he's just like freaking out, throwing things around his apartment. And he sees the metal shears that the Todorokis gave him mm -hmm. just on the floor. And he just pulls it out because <laughs> he broke the mirror. So he just looks at his, through his TV and then he just starts cutting his face along the, the lines that he had drawn on his face to make mm -hmm. himself look like he has the big smile. So he cuts off parts of his cheek parts of the other cheek and then he just cuts off his nose as well for a good measure i guess mm -hmm. i mean he basically like skins his face yeah so like when junko sees him later on he just like has the the, the, the super <laughs> up face and you're just like oh <laughs> well, yeah they're like oh, let's just they don't really show him like cutting himself but they show like all the blood splatter the blood and all splatter the, sound, and the sounds the sounds and just him screaming and then just the room full of blood afterwards like the drunk guy drunk old man mm -hmm. walks by and then him just like running out and drive driving away with like a a cloth covering his face because like he's always like ah i cut my face i'm bleeding this sucks <laughs> So obviously, like when you see him later on, he's like, he, you know, obviously that stuff doesn't grow back. So he's got like, nope, no nose, and is like, you can see all of his teeth. He's got the Joker uh -huh. face essentially. Yeah, he Jokerified himself. I I had to look away at this part because I was like, oh, this is this is a lot. It's gnarly. <laughs> it's gnarly. 
Real gross. Ugh. So yeah, that's that's the big gross out moment of this game. <laughs> yeah, it was it was intense. My um, God. But yeah, they also mentioned how like um, Minoru made Makoto go to Junko's house to give her the note, and also to dress up as the smiling man when he did that. He's like, oh, you'll, she'll be happy when she sees that. Mm -hmm. She wasn't happy when she saw that. <laughs> Um, and nope. then all of that leads into um, the encounter at the abandoned village where he goes after her thinking she's – he's, like, trying to think she's Emiko, of course. And then he gets his brain splattered in by a machete from the back from Makoto who comes in from behind. And that's the story of Minoru the Smiling Man. And I think that one of the things they do well is that, like, uh, afterward – like, while also – while and after, Utsuki's kind of, like – this is a very tragic tale. It's very sad. But also, he did some very terrible things some, and committed terrible crimes that should not be forgiven. So, mm -hmm. like, I think you can look at this and be like, this is a very sad situation. It is a very tragic story. But that doesn't mean he's, like, he should be in the clear for this. Like, he did things of his own volition and, you know, had to pay the price for it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are there are reasons behind what happened, but Cause like it's not. He, he definitely says like you know he's he, you could definitely look at Minoru as a victim in this as well, and I think that's a fair thing to say. Yes. But also, he caused victims, so <laughs> he he murdered several people. Yep. And also kidnapped one for eighteen years. Yep. It's it's a lot. It is a lot. My God, the. Oh, but one thing I do want to mention, um, cause, cause you didn't mention it is, um, that after you get through this, then you go back to the title screen again and it does like the full logo, mm -hmm. which is the smile when it has the two sides on. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. That's really clever. And it's also terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was shook by this game. It is a lot. Uh, I will also say that, like, um, throughout this epilogue, they animated it. Yes, they did. They brought in Mappa, of all people, to come in and animate a, like, 15-minute 15, 15 OVA, essentially, to recap all of Minoru's uh, exploits and everything. So that was a interesting thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that was, a, that was a wild epilogue, to say the least. Mm -hmm. and. It definitely answers all your questions that you're wondering. Yep, everything that I wondered at the end, I was like, oh, that's answered. Okay. So you get all wow, that, wow, and wow. it's just like, man, it's it's a very sad story, a very tragic story that you hear at the end of this game, but also it's just like, it's also very dark and disturbing, as you know you would expect. Yep. That's the Famicom Detective Club way. <laughs> yep, sure is. <laughs> Oh boy! Wowie! Wowie! Zowie! That is the that's the new Famicom Detective Club game for you. I hope they keep making these. I I really hope they do as well because like I think this was really uh it's 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 hard to say something is uh when it's about a dis dark and disturbing murder plot that it's good and entertaining but you know this yep. was that <laughs> it um, was. You know, felt very much in line with the other games. Like, didn't feel out of place or anything. It's like, this just felt like another... Like, they just unearthed a game that came out, like, a year afterward, after the other games. It's like, all right, here's another one. And they just found it, and here it is. Um, so that was great. Um, yeah, I hope this does well enough that they think about doing another one of these and, like, somehow also gives Nintendo the idea that, like, what if we just make weird M-rated stuff as well every now and then? Because why not? Mm-hmm. We make a console that has people from all ages wanting to play it, so, like, why not do something like that? Be good. Yeah. Now we can all go put our paper bags on and smile. <laughs> snip, snip, snip. Nope. <laughs> nope. None of that. None uh, of that. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, well, that's going to do it for us this week. 
Uh, so if you'd like more from us, head on over to seasonalanimecheckup.com or sac.cool. It's where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Now Watch. You can also find columns and review on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can follow, uh, you can buy our, follow us on Blue Sky Seasonal Anime Checkup.com. You can buy our books at One Shining Moment, Critical Analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, Hot Tubs, and Pac Man on Amazon. And uh, yeah, on Amazon.com. I completely butchered that, but you get the gist. Yep. We got books. Uh, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash SACOVA, buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, our monthly bonus Patreon exclusive podcast, and a whole wealth of other bonus stuff as well. It's all fun. Yay. Uh, next week, maybe we'll talk about the Persona 3 DLC. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Or something else. Who knows? Mm-hmm. 